All right, so today I'm going to show you some of the updates to Boombox. Let's go ahead and drop down our Boombox node, plug that in. Let's take a look. We're going to use Boombox to fracture this sort of complicated object, and you'll see uh, the complications of it in just a second. Um, let's start by turning off this guide, and let's look at our fracture geometry. So this is a, if we look at it, you can see this is a convex piece of geometry. Um, I'm going to get into that shortly, but just wanted to mention that right at the beginning. Uh, I'm going to want a few more pieces than this. So in the material settings in the um, fracture tab, let's just crank this to 120, which is where I just landed from some earlier tests. And I'm going to show you some of the... Um, the new things that I've added. Um, all right, so that's that's done. We're going to say this is what we want. So I am going to go ahead and cache this out. I'm going to use an explicit path just uh, just because. So I'm actually going to put this in a one folder up from my hip file geo, and I'm going to say boombox update is what I'm going to call this boombox boombox update, and I'm going to save that to disk load it in and let's check our high res geo. So the first thing that is worth talking about is if we hop into our velocity tab, let's um, hit this new visualize button right here. Uh, let me also turn on my guide geometry for the, for the impact velocity here. Let's grab our handle and we can move this around. And what you'll see is, let me, let me sculpt this just a little bit. So what you'll see is now this velocity visual, the velocity visualization uh, shows you directly on your geometry uh, where velocity is being applied. And where that's useful is when you start to dial in this velocity radius, you get a, a much better idea of, uh, of what's actually happening there. And not only do we see the linear velocity, now, if we want to see what the, our angular velocity looks like, we get that as well. By default, you get a, a randomization of this. And if I just hit play, you'll... Oh, there's no gravity. One second. Let me turn on gravity, ground plane. Uh, let me disable the guide for the ground plane. And now... Which you can kind of see if we turn this angular velocity up. Let's turn it up to three. Even though we didn't explicitly add any, um, you just kind of get that by default with uh, impact velocity. Now these these pieces are going far too far away, so let's turn on our constraints. Constraints. So now you see that we have some constraints. They are getting deleted by our velocity, so that when the at the initial impact pieces fly off. Now one thing to note uh, in the update here, we've got if you feed in existing constraints. Those are going to be maintained all the way through. I'm not going to get into that in this overview, but that is something that's been added. Um, in addition to these constraints, what I want to do is set up this static group. So let's look at our geometry again. And uh, when you tick on the static group, um, you will see this other uh, handle here that uh, that pops up. That This is a group bounds that will define pieces that are going to be inactive in the simulation. Let's go back to our velocity. Let's turn that visualization off for a second and now you can see um, anything that's anything that's um, within this group is excluded from the simulation and because we have these constraints uh, many more pieces are just staying staying put let me continue here let me turn these off because I don't really, I don't really want to see those handles anymore. So to turn those off, right-click on your um, universal handle here, and then just uh, deselect those. The next thing that got a a big speed up was if anybody had in the simulation tab, if you, if anybody tried to turn on the uh, collision representation of this geometry, you probably noticed that there was a big lag in doing that. So I, I've I've really sped this up. Um, it's still not just the nature of the way it is. It's not fast enough to like 
really play through, but you can scrub through it a bit more accurately now. So now when you are setting up uh, your initial collision, you see all these gaps here. Maybe that's not what you want. You can reduce this collision padding and you can you get a pretty decent um, pretty decent feedback from doing that in uh, in the viewport. I might go even a little bit lower for this particular piece of geometry. And as you can see, if I um, scrub through here, there are going to be some of these pieces. You remember how we talked about, or how I mentioned, that this is a concave piece of geometry? Like, these pieces are solid um, because of the... These, these collision pieces appear solid because of this representation. Now, for some of these pieces, that's still going to be fine um, because, you know, I mean, nothing's really going to collide in that little crevice there but we play through if we get any weird pieces if we get any oddities like maybe this piece over here could be odd because um, if we look at the geometry representation you know even that still might not matter but if you wanted to switch this to concave you can now it's going to take just a second to um, actually you know what let me let me escape that. Let me hit escape in the viewport. Um, it was trying to calculate this simulation all the way through. Now, if you hit, uh, if you change this to concave, uh, do so on the first frame and then tick that off. And now, because this is a heavier calculation, uh, particularly at the at the start of it, it's going to take a second to go. But once that once that starts going, and you can see the simulation time is a little bit longer as well. Now then, if we take a look at our uh, geometry, you can see that the collision geometry representation is exactly like our uh, proxy geometry that we're feeding into the into the sim. So if you run into a situation where you're having, um, you know, if you're not happy with your collisions and you think that it's because of this uh, geometry representation, you can check that a lot quicker now than you used to be able to. This used to almost lock up Houdini when you would click that, but now it's much, much better. Um, all right. The other, the last thing that is worth mentioning that got a, a sort of a big overhaul is, let me switch this back to convex hull just for faster iterations. I go into velocity and change this to from edit and then um, use, let's hop in our, custom velocity here. Uh, you'll see our this this has maintained some changes that I made earlier. So let's um, let's reset all changes. So now we've got our guide on. We hop in. You get a little bit cleaner view of this. So this is inside a subnet internally. Everything is still here. If you wanted to dive around you can, but uh, you the dive target for um, this is set up to point you really directly to what you want to edit for the custom velocity. So now if we go to our tool settings here and, and we hit select, make sure we're in points mode and select some of these points, come back here. If we come over and start dragging these around and update our rotation, you still get these this ghosted uh, geometry. The reason being is that we're dealing with packed primitives here, and in an edit stop to get this nice uh, soft fall off that you can update with your mouse wheel, to get that you have to be in points mode. But in points mode, you don't get any uh, rotational values to um, to your geometry, which is we we need that. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of trickery under the hood to get that to work, so that's why there's a ghosted up. Um, doubled up geometry representation. To get rid of it, just click off of your edit node and then you're you're good to go. Uh, another thing that was that one of the reasons I had to to rethink what's going on internally here was in the last version, say you had this piece over here rotated uh, like we have now, and then I would click away and grab another piece and rotate it. I didn't know it, but this piece was actually reverting back to its default rotation. So that's fixed now. Uh, the other thing that was happening, which was more concerning than anything else, was the uh, simulation speed was very different between uh, custom velocity and impact velocity. So now that's been remedied, and you can see this is playing back 24 frames a second. Um, even when I, um, if I reset the simulation, you can see the 
blue bar goes away and it's still really fast. There's a little bit of a hit at the beginning, but this is much, much faster than it was. And again, we can see this, uh, we can see our, if we turn off this guide, you can see at the onset uh, which of these pieces are getting the most angular velocity. You can also, again, see which ones are getting the normal velocity. Uh, lastly, I added this randomize velocity that, that works on a global scale. Uh, and what I mean by that is no matter how you are applying your velocity, whether it's um, from impact or from custom, you can now randomize that or add, you sort of add a randomization on top of what you set up. Um, so those are the updates for Boombox. If you've purchased this already, thank you so much. Check the email that you have linked to your Gumroad account and you should have an update with um, a notification that says these files are available in your library. If you haven't picked this up yet and you want to, you'll get the updated version now. That should be ready to go. Thanks so much for checking this out and for all the support so far.